RSC or React Server Components. This is one of the features of React, which I think I talked the first time a couple of years ago when RSC was announced. And it has, to be honest, not taken off, right? It hasn't taken off that much, but it has a lot of hype and a lot of talk going around on tech Twitter, if you are part of that. And I want to discuss that and present my views and my opinions also. RSC basically has two teams right now. React Server Components has two teams. The first one feels like Team Versal, which heavily pushes RSC which says that you know rsc is the future it changes everything it is a very good addition to the react ecosystem and of course that automatically benefits next year's as well the second team is sort of like team dax which is it's not exactly opposite but it seems like you know it's not a huge thing in itself in react right and it's not something that gives you extreme performance boost or anything of that sorts and it's kind of opposite but not exactly so what is it exactly and where do i stand and what are my personal views and opinions on this. So let's try to understand first of all what React server components are and before that even I want to make you understand how does Next.js currently works without React server components and all that stuff. Let's let's start with the very basics right because this is this is very interesting stuff and you will appreciate it once you understand this. Once you visit a website like CodeDAM for example and by the way which is built on Next.js right. Let's see what's happening here. So when I refresh this page do you observe something? We have two places where potential content is loading, right? When I refresh this, it's way too fast to see, but the first loader is here and the second loader is over here where, I mean, the content itself is not visible. It just fades into visibility, right? Now, what's happening over here is let me just go ahead and disable my JavaScript once. Also, let me just keep the cache on. Let's just disable JavaScript, right? So what I've done now is that JavaScript would not execute on this page. Now, if I refresh, you see something, right? What you are seeing is that we get a page. We still get a page which looks like, you know, it's all functional. There are links, hover effects, CSS, HTML is kicking in. Everything is happening. The only thing is that those two loaders are gone, right? This loader is not appearing and the content is also not loading here. And we also have like a small front-end utility for search, but that's also not working, right? So how do traditional websites before RSC built with React and Next.js work? Well, there are a few ways you can render stuff on the web, right? The first thing is that you have to send down HTML. You have to send this HTML down, which consists of all of this content, all of this gibberish and all the things. This content itself renders this, right? So your browser, what it does is that it'll look at the source code and it'll say, okay, this looks good. I have this HTML document. Oh, okay, you have an image, which is a favicon. I'll go ahead and download this and I'll put it here in this navigation bar. It says, okay, you have, let's see, a CSS file. Awesome, I'll go ahead and download this. This is by the way, Tailwind. And I'll put it right here on this page, which renders this, this nice navigation and everything. But because I've disabled JavaScript, it says, hold on, I don't have to download this JS files. I'm not gonna touch them. I'm not gonna download them. I'm not gonna execute them. So this is what you get, right? This is the first version of a page. This is the first version of how, you know, it looks to your browser as well as to your user. If I enable JavaScript, what happens is that your browser also downloads this bit, this pieces of content, and then it will just process that JavaScript, it will execute that. And what your JavaScript does is that it performs some network request. So in this case, let me just go ahead and enable JavaScript again. And if I go ahead and enable this, hit refresh, you're going to see that it performed these network requests to our GraphQL server on the backend and it got my playgrounds from my database, right? So I have created certain playgrounds on CodeDAM. When I create them, it gets stored in my database on CodeDAM and then I can show them as website to you through this interface, right? But this interface requires us to call backend. The reason we don't generate this ahead of time is because this part of the page is dynamic right now you as a user would have five other playgrounds somebody else would have other playgrounds somebody else would have other playgrounds and so on this part i have 45 more xp i have two notifications and i have my own profile right on code down this part is also very specific to my profile right this pro badge you see, it's very specific to me. Some people will be pro on CodeDAM, some people will not be pro on CodeDAM. So all of the dynamic elements you see, they are not rendered ahead of time. We do not render them with HTML, CSS itself. What we do is we let the backend JavaScript decide what kind of content it should render, right? And to do that, we have to perform a network call, a network request to the backend, which gives us JSON, and then we use our React in the front end to render these components. I hope this much is clear because this is how 
most modern fast websites work they render out a thin html shell which is you know what you saw without javascript so this html shell which you see is common for everyone right this is basically this is common part for everyone on top of this these personalized elements are created dynamically through javascript after talking to backend right because backend needs to be involved backend needs to tell okay what these are your playgrounds backend needs to tell okay this is this guy's username and all for those dynamic elements you need javascript now what rsc does and what this soft fight is about is that rsc actually takes this json calling which we are doing through graphql and then rendering the graphql response via react via react library on the screen it takes that part on the server now i'll tell you what what happens exactly an easier way to understand this what it means is that if you look at if i enable back javascript enable javascript if i refresh this what you see is that this is a component right this is a component over here which you see this line this row is actually a component which has this div class it has this anchor tag this has all the classes all the styles this has this functionality of clicking edit title and so on and so forth so this is a react.js component now what rsc does is that this it renders this component on the server instead of your client it renders this on the server and then it streams the component to your client to render it as a you know as a html thing as a static html the difference here is that when you're using something which i had told you before you get some response from an api with graphql you get this json response or whatever and then you render it on the front end using javascript right so you write this you know playgrounds.map and then playground and then you create a div and everything the only difference with rsc fundamentally is that you take this code on server instead of client and then you render that into html and then you stream it to the client and then you rehydrate it for event listeners or for click events and everything for state management and everything that's the fundamental thing about rsc right now next is also does a a few more magic like partial pre rendering and things like that but we'll not get into that that's sort of impressive but this is this is something which is you know this is this is the crux of rsc now does it seem like a huge thing a huge change i would say for the most part for most applications no why i mean because it just feels like you are offloading a compute to server for a component which is you know first of all it's let's say example of this page it's very small in size so it's not taking like more than 20% of the page and second of all because you already have to download the react.js runtime environment you just have to execute it to render this component on the screen right there could be use cases where this is heavily you know it, it just improves performance heavily for example if the component rendering itself is very expensive on the front end on the client side or you are doing you know you you are just performing some level of database calls directly within the component itself which gets rendered on the server what this means is that you eliminate effectively eliminate this call itself and then just render it on the server there could be performance benefits to that but very honestly speaking and you know seeing the web first hand for like more than 5 10 years now myself through the eyes of all these big players i feel that this is an incremental change it's not a fundamental change which will change the landscape or you know it can change something static site generation i felt like was a very solid very strong change because see how fast these web pages load right if i had to server side render this page all the time which is what we will do with things like php and all there would definitely be a penalty because this page the reason this page is so fast is because this is the static html is delivered from edge from you know the closest server i have to my computer right now and then rest of the dynamic things get plugged in the moment the static shell is there and i can see on the website i can see a few loaders coming in so i know like within a couple of seconds the content should be there so what i feel is that rsc is not a huge change it's more of an incremental change for most of the sites careful with a few words here because you know i don't want anyone to interpret this in the wrong way it's a great piece of technology but for a very specific use case where like i mentioned like your component itself takes a lot of time or a lot of compute to render then it's better to probably do it on the server let client get a just you know a, a piece of html css code and it will just rehydrate react on top of that other than that i feel like it's for the most part it's unnecessary and second of all it also locks you in the vendor you are using which is something i think not a lot of people talk about now the reason i say this is because if you think about it from 
Vercel or any other provider, Netlify, any any company, if they convince you to use RSC, you get logged into the compute which they provide. Now, hear me out here. React server components, by definition, need a server to be rendered, right? And server compute is something you manage as a developer or as a business person, and you also pay for it. When you pay for a compute, well, it depends on the usage then. The more you use, or the more your clients use in this case, the more you have to pay. Now, it doesn't matter if it's the rendering is happening on serverless or this or that or any other place. As long as a computer, a CPU is running, it's processing something, you will pay for it as a business owner. If it's a server. On the other hand, completely, if it's a client computer, that means this JavaScript which is getting executed on my own computer, you don't get to pay for it. I pay for it from my own CPU, right? I have this MacBook, I have this laptop, it has certain CPU it's executing this JavaScript so it this is the one which is converting that JSON into HTML and then displaying it on my screen right very fundamentally speaking you are in some way or another taking that JSON to HTML conversion in react from my computer to your computer and once you do that you as a business administrator or you know technical person or whatever who's managing the cost you start paying for everyone combined right this was the same thing which happened when you statically render a page right for example we could just simply deliver full you know js payload to you and when i disable javascript on this the screen becomes white and then it's react's job to just you know use client side rendering to make this page visible the reason we don't do this is because of seo number one and second is performance this performance is much faster than you downloading a full page then react initializing itself figuring out on which route you are with a react router or something and then displaying you content finally so there are trade-offs there are things which you have to do rsc in itself locks you in a vendor because now the compute which you are using has to be from the same provider where you're also hosting your website. Now, again, let me clarify this. What I mean by this is that on CodeDAM, for example, I'll just give you a quick example. On CodeDAM, this HTML which is delivered to you is from Vercel, right? Vercel delivers this HTML content. However, this JavaScript payload, which you see, this JavaScript payload, which is static for everyone, if I refresh this, and if you go to this, let's see what we have. If you go to this docs tab and you check out, you're going to see that we get a Cloudflare cache hit as well as Vercel cache hit. So what's happening is that in our case, at least, what we did is to reduce some bandwidth cost, we put Cloudflare in front of Vercel. So Cloudflare is actually the one who's delivering you this JavaScript payload, right? This JavaScript file. But let's say if we shift this to React Server Components, let's say if we shift this rendering to RSC, what's going to happen is that this component over here has to be rendered on Vercel Compute, right? Because Cloudflare can only do simple things. It can only cache files, it can only, you know, cache static assets, and it can just deliver it on behalf of Vercel or for us. It can't dynamically just intercept the compute in between because that's only something Vercel knows, right? Just like page validation or revalidation is something only Vercel knows. Similarly, RSC, the execution logic, only Vercel would know or only your provider would know. So it effectively not only just bounds you into vendor, it also increases your cost. And given that Vercel is one of those companies which has the highest you know bandwidth and a highest compute rates out in the market even higher than aws surprisingly it's probably net net speaking a bad idea i mean rsc's it's it's a bad idea for you as a business owner based on the return of investment you're getting you're spending a lot of money you're putting in a lot of money in versal infra and everything and you get a very slight return in most of the cases that's that's important for example in our case we will get a very small incremental change our pages are all already super fast they load super fast on a single refresh they load it within a few milliseconds. Most of our optimization, if any, should probably go into optimizing this backend call, right? Because that is where probably it's the slowest. It takes like four to 500 milliseconds on an AWS Lambda and then, you know, just getting that response back. So in our case, instead of going for RSC, we would probably optimize our backend, backend.codedam.com, our GraphQL layer, our, all of that, to make this content appear faster than going for RSC and then getting locked into Vercel and then, you know, paying huge amount of money for bandwidth and compute. But that's that's just me. Of course, there are use cases where, you know, you would need that and it'll be a game changer for you. It can happen, right? I'm not saying that Vercel is wrong or, you know, I am right and this and that. I'm just providing you one perspective on why it doesn't make sense 
from a cost perspective and a performance perspective also for us, for a company like CodeDamp to shift to an RFC model. And why I think in this case, at least I am with Team DAX, right? I am, I want to say that we are not bidding against RFC. They can help you from bad to mediocre. But I mean, most of the performance benefits you get is like this, where you render something statically as fast as you can. And then, you know, if possible, without vendor lock-in from a cost perspective, you try to make your backend faster instead of getting into RSC first. Because if you make your backend faster, your RSC themselves will get faster, right? At some point, because your React server component also has to talk to your deep, to your backend, right? At some point or another. Of course, if you are using a completely, you know, self-hosted solution, then it probably makes a lot more sense also because maybe your Next.js server is sitting alongside your database. So it'll just make a lot more sense that you just send the streamed component directly. But again, it depends on if you're doing it self-hosted, if you're doing it on Versal, if you're doing it on some sort of provider or not, what are the bandwidth costs, what are the network costs, what are, you know, under the hood things which people are not talking about, not telling you about. So it's, it's a strange market, right? You have to be careful. You have to not take anything on face value. This is something which I learned after using, like after we wasted like almost like a couple of weeks this year with Prisma. So since then I have stopped taking things on face value, something which somebody says, it's not always going to be true. You have to do your due diligence. You have to do your own research. And that's how you try to understand and uncover truth about what's right and what's wrong. So that's my view on RSC React components, React Server components.